Samsung Galaxy S6 plan for a faster, better, stronger smartphone needs an edge. Apple has had its moment in the media spotlight. The second and third tier manufacturers have all rolled the dice at CES in Las Vegas, and the companies who swerved away from Nevada announced the new handsets the week after. What's next? Samsung's flagship. Right now, it feels like the industry is waiting for Samsung to make its big annual move and reveal the Samsung Galaxy S6. This handset is its keystone of 2015. Can Samsung regain momentum, will the young smartphone manufacturers take over from the South Korean company, and does the Android platform still allow the major players to innovate? The Samsung Galaxy S6 could easily be a bright new dawn for Samsung and be a flagship for all of the Android platform. Unfortunately Samsung's visible approach to the Galaxy S6 so far does not appear to be the trailblazing path that led to the top of the Android ecosystem but an iterative path of making everything slightly better than the last model, avoiding any k balizatio of other product lines, and allowing issues of portfolio distinction and manufacturing cost to dilute the message of the Galaxy S6. In my opinion, Samsung needs to have two goals with the Galaxy S6. It needs to be the biggest and best featured smartphone available today, and it needs to have a touch of innovation and uniqueness to make it stand out. The Galaxy range is seen as one of the leading lights of the Android world. By volume it is the most prodigious brand, and the hype and spectacle around the yearly reveal of the main S handset confers it flagship status. Everything about the presentation identifies that handset as the handset to beat, the handset at the pinnacle, the handset that every variant should derive itself from. In simpler terms, this year's Galaxy S6 is expected to be the flagship handset from Samsung and as such it should be the mother of all phones, with the highest specifications in memory, storage, processor speed, camera, screen size, connectivity, battery life, and more. The spec sheet should scream out unbeatable to everyone who glances at it. Being the biggest X is not the only route to capturing smartphone sales, but it feels like that Samsung has to meet this to continue to be considered as best of breed. Unfortunately the South Korean company might struggle to portray that image to the customer. While there are many rumors and leaks from the supply chain on the parts that will or will not be used on the S6, the feeling is almost one of compromise. From the use of a plastic backplate to allow the Galaxy S7 smartphone to be identified as the only all-metal chassis, as reported by D-Daily and others today, to the discussions about which 64-bit processor the handset will initially ship with, Samsung's own Exeos line or Qualcomm Snapdragon 810, it's not an automatic assumption that the consumer will accept the Galaxy S6 as being not just the best handset as it is launched, but the best handset that is likely to be on sale throughout the rest of 2015. Samsung needs to win the specifications war. If the South Korean company simply presents a handset that looks like the Galaxy S4 and S5, with an improved touch whiz user interface and some new applications that sync to Samsung's cloud services, the Galaxy S6 is not going to be an easy layup into the smartphone basket. At the same time, Samsung also needs to generate the idea of building something that only Samsung could do. Samsung has always been a fast follower company in the smartphone world, and its innovations to this point have tended to be variants of a Me Too strategy, such as fingerprint recognition Apple and waterproofing Sony to name two. With the commodities RTO of smartphone hardware, it is no longer enough to just have the best specifications, you need some romance as well. This is the intriguing part of the discussions around the S6. Can Samsung romance the world? It's even more intriguing because I believe that Samsung actually has a secret weapon that can deliver that adulation and lust. The Edge Making its first appearance last year on the special edition of the Galaxy Note 4, the concept of the Edge bent a strip of pixels down along the long right edge next to the screen, providing digital spine for touchscreen controls, information, and alerts. Samsung neglected to mention at the time this was only going to be available on a small number of handsets in South Korea, as opposed to being universally available. Here is something that changes the discussion, here is something that changes how you can use a smartphone, and here is something that nobody else has. 
If I was Samsung, I would go with the idea of the Edge on the Galaxy S6 and run with it, hard, and offer no fallback basic S6 handset. The Galaxy S6 Edge version would be the only version of the Galaxy S6.